Greetings Wastelanders. Thanks for tuning in to another Gaslands NorCal instructional video. Today we're going to go over a few different products that I like to use when I'm doing chipping and weathering. Here we go. Whenever I come across a video or a method on weathering while perusing the mean streets of YouTube, I always like to give it a shot. I can't say I've tried them all, but I have tried a lot of them. Um, this is the method I've always seemed to come back to when I do my builds. Chipping. I'm not talking about the golf kind. Uh, anywhere you go, you should be able to find some real-world examples of chipping, and whether it's buildings, vehicles, ship containers, what have you. The cars we're going to be working on today are the 64 Corvette Stingray, uh, and I'll be using the MIG chipping uh, from uh, Jimenez, Jim, Jimenez, Jimenez, and the 70 Camaro, and for that I'm going to be using the Vallejo Chocolate Brown. Uh, I've already gone ahead and started off my paint jobs on the cars, and now it's time to get them wastelands ready. Aside from just overall cool visual effects you can get from weathering your builds, it's also helpful to cover up any kind of mess up you had on the initial paint job. And as you can see on the Stingray, I did some uh, lines that didn't really come out too clean. Um, this is where weathering and chipping can really uh, kind of save your build. Uh, on the Camaro, that kind of turned out the way I wanted to, so I'll do a little less chipping on this one. Um, probably just around the real wells and the base of the, the build. Uh, the products that I'm going to be covering today are the uh, chipping from uh, Ammo by Mig Jimenez and the chocolate brown by Vallejo Paints. The main difference in these two is, uh, if I can get them on the screen, really the uh, this is a little uh, more liquid. This one's a little bit thicker, but you'll see as we go along. Um, let's get right to it. So as I've stated before, when I'm doing my builds, I really like to do multiples at a time. That way I can paint one and then wait for it to dry and then work on another one. Usually I'll have three or four going on at a time. Um, but that's what I like to do. You, what you, you do what you like to do and you do you, I'll do me. Now, when applying paint for chipping, regardless of the product I'm using, I always like to use a kind of messed up brush. Um, with the hairs kind of going higgly piggly, so it gets the paint going all different directions, just like you see in real life. Um, let's start with the Stingray. First off, we're gonna give the paints a really good shake. I really like my uh, paint shaker. Um, it saves a lot of time. Saves a lot of stress on the shoulders and the wrists. Um, so we're going to give that a good shake before we get going. Alright, as you can see, uh, like I said, it's a little bit more liquid. Don't really need too much of it. Get some on there. Kind of dab it out. Um, like I said, we're going to do the, the lines and stuff where it kind of got screwed up. Uh, just kind of dab it on there. You'll see it kind of goes in all different directions, kind of like chipping paint would. Get all kind of the over brushes or the over sprays from the uh, the paint when we did the the striping. Get all that in there. And we're going to do a little bit around the uh, wheel wells. Maybe a little bit down on the bottom. Really trying to get the effect of how it kind of looks in real life. Uh, sometimes you'll get the, the uh, naysayers out there that like to comment that, oh, well that part of a vehicle is really plastic or it's fiberglass you know it's damn good thing we're playing a make-believe car game with hot wheels and we don't have to do stuff like it does in real life because in real life I don't pass by too many cars on the road that have machine guns and flamethrowers so don't listen to what the naysayers say do whatever you want to do what looks cool rule of cool always works out uh, so we'll get these ones on here I'm going to let that dry. See, it already, already is kind of looking a little wastelandy. Set that one aside. Brush it good clean. 
Uh, a lot of times if I'm painting regular, like just doing the base coats or whatever, obviously I'll, I'll switch back and forth the brushes. Chipping doesn't really matter because it's all gonna be the brown anyway. Again, give it a good shake. And like I said, this stuff is gonna come out much thicker. Uh, see, not sure if they use real chocolate in this chocolate brown, but I'm not gonna taste it to try out. Uh, this one, since there's not as much cover-up that's really needed, I'm just going to do a little bit. Sometimes I find a little goes a long way. I'm just going to do around the wheel wells. Kind of, you know, thinking about where it would really kind of show up if it was on a an actual car. You see how I said that the brush kind of goes all higgly piggly and stuff? That's kind of what I'm talking about. And one of the things I do like about this one is it really, really starts showing up with the uh, paint shipping right away, right after you put it on there. It's really cool. Get that around the wheel wells. I'm going to do a little bit around the door where the door hinges would be. Down along the side a little bit. Along the wheel wells on the other side. And like I said, with the brush being as screwed up as it is, it really kind of goes all over the place. And that's one of the things that I really like about Gaslands, as opposed to painting regular miniatures, is it's okay to get stuff all screwed up. It's kind of how it's supposed to look. Wasteland. Let's do a little bit on the hood as well. Kind of around the edges where it would be opening it up. And get some of the top too. Now you see I'm hitting the windshield. I don't really care about that. Um, what I'll usually do if that happens is I will either stick a, some armor on the windshield to cover it up, or if you let it dry a little bit and use a toothpick, it'll come right off. do that real quick so I can show you. Get a handy dandy toothpick and just kind of scrape it off. It'll come off better when it's dried but that's kind of what I'm talking about. A little round back window. There we go. Now, of course, it's not just going to chip off in those areas. The paint's going to chip off kind of sporadically throughout. So I get the brush a little bit damp, kind of crush it out so it's really, really messed up, and just kind of poke, spin the brush while you're doing it. And that way, it won't have the same pattern over and over. But that'll give you a little bit more kind of random patterns. And if you get areas where the paint's pretty thick, dab into those, just go through it. There we go, kind of rusted, well not rusted yet, but chipped up paint. Let's do a little bit of that on this one as well. We'll go back to the uh, mid paint on that. Uh, with the MIG paint being more liquid, really important when you're doing this part to really get the brush kind of going every which way and not quite as much, otherwise you'll get big splotches all over. Like I said, you want to kind of rotate the brush. Hit the highlights along the edges as well because that's a lot of times where your paint's going to chip is on the sharp edges of the 
vehicle. There we go. Looking kind of grunged up and rusty. Um, we're going to let these dry and then we will do a little bit more of this shadowing and get on to uh, some rust. And that's it for chipping. I will go ahead and put a link to the products I use in this video uh, in the description. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, if there's any other videos you would like to see, please leave a comment and I will try to get that done. Gaslands NorCal, signing out.